Before proceeding, please make sure to subscribe and turn on the bell icon for upcoming videos. Odontogenic keratocyst, denoted as OKC, is a rare and benign cystic lesion of the jaws. Accounting for 10 to 12 percent of all jaw cysts. The cyst has a neoplastic nature and a tendency towards recurrence. Following dentigerous and radicular cysts, OKCs are considered the third most common and most important odontogenic or tooth derived cyst. It has both cystic and tumor like nature. OKCs are given a special consideration amongst all jaw cysts. And what makes the cyst different from other odontogenic cysts is because of three statements. Number one, it's greater growth potential compared to other odontogenic cysts, which results in overgrowth of the cyst. This feature is suggestive of its aggressive behavior and is thought to be a result of inactivation or mutations in some tumor suppressor genes within the cystic epithelium, like P53 or PTCA genes. These genes are present throughout our body cells. And when mutated somewhere, cells in that particular area start overproducing themselves. Besides this, the greater growth potential also results from enzymes like collagenase present within the cystic epithelium. Secondly, the cyst shows a high recurrence rate, resulting from its extremely delicate and fragile cystic form left after removal of the cyst. And the third most important cause why the cysts are given so much attention is that in 80% of cases, they are associated with nevoid basal cell carcinoma syndrome, where multiple OKCs are found within the jaws. Let's look at the origination or etiology of the cyst. The cyst originates from odontogenic epithelium which is the epithelium that aids in tooth formation. The cyst is thought to arise mainly from the cell rests of the dental lamina, called epithelial rests of series, left after dental lamina detaches from the oral epithelium in the late bell stage of tooth formation. Some studies support their development from traumatic implantation or downgrowth of the basal cell layer of the surface epithelium or from the reduced enamel epithelium of the dental follicle. Let's talk about some clinical features of the cyst. The cyst mostly affects individuals in the age range between 10 to 40 years with a slight male predilection. In about 60 to 80% of cases, the jaw most commonly involved is the mandibular jaw. The cyst usually presents as a solitary lesion affecting most often the body and ramus of the mandible. The cyst varies in size. It's either so small and symptomless that goes unnoticed or it may present with extremely large size with symptoms of pain, swelling and drainage. In some cases, multiple cysts may also exist, either as a separate entity or in association with nevoid basal cell carcinoma syndrome. Since the cyst grows in an anterior posterior direction within the medullary cavity of the bone, therefore in most of the cases it does not show any obvious bony expansion. This type of cystic growth is most often seen when the cysts are located within the angle of the mandible, hence growing in two directions, that is anteriorly towards the body and posteriorly towards the ramus as well. Mobility and displacement of teeth are also associated with large OKCs. The cyst rarely causes resorption of the roots of adjacent teeth. And excessive expansion and thinning of bone in large cysts may result in bony fracture of the jaws.
The radiographic presentation of the cysts are just like other odontogenic cysts and tumors. Smaller OKCs appear to be a well-defined unilocular radiolucency. And since the smaller lesions are slow growing, that's why they have a well corticated margin around their radiolucent zone. On the other hand, the cysts that are extremely large in size appears to be a multilocular radiolucency, having a soap bubble like appearance. In about 25 to 40% of cases, an unadapted tooth is associated with the cyst, thereby resembling a dentigerous cyst. However, there may be even a missing tooth within the jaw, and this is indicative of origination of the cyst from the dental lamina of that particular missing tooth. Histologically, the cyst possess a cystic lumen, an epithelial lining, and an extremely thin connective tissue, or a fibrous capsule, which makes it difficult to enucleate from the bone in one piece. The epithelium is usually 6 to 8 cells in thickness, and without any red fringes, which makes the interface of the epithelium and fibrous wall completely flat. The basal cells of the epithelium are composed of a palisaded layer of cuboidal or columnar epithelial cells. While the luminal surface possesses flattened and parakeratotic cells. The fluid within the cystic lumen is either clear, resembling serum, or keratinaceous, containing white and cheesy keratinaceous debris. Inflammation results in alteration of all of these histopathologic features of the cyst. The treatment options of an OKC ranges from simple enucleation and curettage to mass fertilization, peripheral ostectomy, and bony resection of the jaws. Since one of the main problems with OKCs is their recurrence once formed throughout life, this recurrence is because the cyst has an extremely thin and friable fibrous wall, making it difficult to enucleate in one piece from its bony cavity. Researchers prove that this high recurrence rate is observed mostly after enucleation and curettage of the cyst. Therefore, peripheral ostectomy in smaller lesions and bony resections in extensive lesions can be performed to reduce the recurrence rate of the cyst. I hope this video helps. If you think this video was really helpful, please do like the video and subscribe the channel and help me reach more people by sharing the video with friends. Besides, if you have any questions regarding this video, you may write them down in the comment box. Thank you for watching.